Hey guys, it's Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. Today we're going to have a go at fixing this uh, electric fan heater. It's actually not one that came in the e-waste, it's one that we've had inside. I have a suspicion as to what's wrong with it. Uh, it does work, but it cuts out um, fairly quickly and the thermostat control doesn't seem to make any difference. So the thermostat's that side. So we'll pull it apart and see if we can identify the problem, see if we can fix it. I suspect it's a problem that a lot of you might have with these heaters, so let's not throw it out. Let's see if we can repair it. Okay, let's start with some basics. If you've found this video because you've got an electric fan heater like this and it's not working, just run through some really quick, simple steps to work out why, because you may be able to solve your problem easier than you think. Firstly, make sure your power point that it's plugged into has power uh, by plugging something else in and seeing if it works is the best way. Um, they often have a switch, this one doesn't, but some of them have a switch on the base uh, and that's a protection switch in case the thing falls over, then it's not going to work. So just check that that operates. Uh, so they're two of the main reasons why it won't actually run at all. If it is running and then clicks out fairly quickly, it may be the thermostat control. If it's turned right down to low, you'll find that the room won't get very warm at all and then the heater will click off and then it will click in a bit later on. So you can turn the thermostat up much higher. Uh, this one has been set to maximum, and we've had this in the bathroom, but it still clicks out fairly easily. So I suspect that there's no issue with the thermostat. I think there's another problem inside. Uh, and we'll pull it apart now. I can see that it's quite dusty, but we'll pull the case off and just have a look. Now, the first problem you might have uh, is that they use security screws a lot of times on these. In this case, they've got a little uh, triangle-shaped screw, and I don't actually have one to suit it. I have a security set here, uh, and these are great. However, you can't get these ones in the hole because they're quite deep holes. But in this case, I've just got a, a smallish flat blade screwdriver, it's actually a large jeweler screwdriver and the blade there is wide enough to go into the triangle piece and if you keep enough downwards pressure on it it actually will undo them so that's a little bit of a trick uh, if they're particularly tight you're going to have some problems but in this case i think it's going to work so i get it in the center piece i make sure i push down fairly firmly while i'm trying to turn it and yes it's going to undo I'll show you once I get it out how it's actually worked. They're just self tappers that go into the plastic, so they're not usually extremely tight. And there we go. Let's see if we can get a zoom up in this. A close enough view with it staying in focus. You can see it's a triangle, and the flat blade will fit in and lock as you try and turn it. So that's worked. Let's get the rest of them out. With the screws removed, we can then take the fan apart. And I can see that there's a lot of dust in here. Oh, oh my goodness, look at that. So this is what happens with fans a lot. And I'll tell you why. And I'm pretty sure, as I said, I'm pretty sure I know what's wrong with it. Um, because these fans sit on the floor most of the time, very, very rarely people have them on the bench. They draw air in the back and the fan blows the air out the front and it blows it through a heating element. Uh, actually, it draws the air through the heating element and then blows the air out the front. So if the fan's sitting on the floor and it's normally in the corner of a room and when you have it in a bathroom, you're going to get a lot of fluff and in, in particular, a lot of hair. Uh, and guess where the air hair being very light is going to end up ends up in the corner of the room, gets behind the fan, and it's sucked straight into the back of the fan. So you have a lot of fluff and hair being sucked in, like a vacuum cleaner, I guess. And uh, yeah, it, there's no bag to catch it. It ends up in your heater. That's amazing. Now, I'm not sure if you can see this. Let's see if we can get a bit closer. Look, it's got a tail. Now, those of you that know Christine or have seen her on my channel, uh, she pops into my videos from time to time. She has super long hair. So a lot of it, that will be Christine's hair. I'll be sure to give it back to her after I finish cleaning this fan out. But it's wrapped around the fan blade. 
and with all this dust and everything this is possibly from a few years ago in fact there's a chance that this heater might have even been one i got out of a house lot and we've taken it home to use so some of this fluff could be from anywhere i'm sure it's never been apart since it was new but uh, i'm fairly certain this long hair will be christine's so that's going to bind things up and the hair will wrap around the shaft and to the motor it will start to cause excess friction and because we don't have the quantity of air coming through that we normally do remembering that the elements are still going to heat to the same amount uh, the airflow is going to be less therefore the thermostat is probably going to sense that the room's hotter the thermostat's just up there it'll sense that the room's hotter than what it actually is because it's probably much hotter inside the fan and it will click out uh, even when the thermostat setting is set to the maximum it will click out before the room actually starts to get warm so these also do have it should have a thermal fuse in here somewhere so if the thing actually does get too hot and threatens to melt plastic the thermal fuse will blow and protect it but i'm sure we can get this back to normal operating conditions just by cleaning all this muck out we'll make sure that the shaft into the motor the little bushing is clear of hair and we'll just give it a drop of lubricant and i think that's all we need to do be an easy fix much better than throwing the, the heater out so i've just blown the heater out with some compre compressed air after grabbing a handful of fluff and i've um i've just noticed that's actually the thermostat control there i think i pointed up here before there is a, a thermal fuse under here as well but this one has three little screws we can actually take the fan blades off which will be great because we can then check the bushings of the electric motor uh, we don't probably have to take that out but we'll take the fan off there we go that'll allow us to have a much better clean in around the the end of the motor there oh there's a lot of hair tangled up in there let's see if we can have a closer look again okay we can see how much hairs around that spindle there around the shaft and that will be rubbing right down into the bush they don't have bearings in these motors they've just usually got a bronze bush a lot more dust around the motor as well uh, the other end of the motor may have a bit of hair around it too but it's usually this end that gets most of the the tangly stuff and we can't really get to the other end unless we actually take the motor out i think we might still do that it's only a couple of screws and then we can make sure the thing's totally clean and lubed ready for another decent stint in service it looks like there's only two screws that hold the whole fan and the element assembly in they're not even very tight oh there's another one. Oh, there's four i think yeah four all up okay we can lift this away now i might take this screw out here which is holding some of the wiring and also this one okay that should remove all of the fan yep look at the muck there uh, we can get to that other end bush really easily now i can see that spinning in there so we'll put a drop of oil in there before we put it back together and this is what can happen with some of the dust you see that it's actually a bit charred so it's got it's built up and it's been resting on the element so you may get a little bit of smoke out of your heater sometimes if there's this much fluff in there and i suppose potentially it could start a fire so it's worthwhile cleaning these heaters out every so often as a bit of a service anyway now i'm a bit lazy to get my air compressor out i've just got a little can of compressed air here it's um, a very expensive way to do this but it's also very very convenient i'm not sure how we're going for focus here but i've just pried quite a lot of the hair it was actually right down inside the bush so it's really been binding things up i'm sure the fan wasn't spinning anywhere near what it should be so we're just going to have to try and leave all this hair out of here somehow it really holds on tight so i've got all the hair out i'm pretty happy with how it's cleaned up there are little bits of fluff in the element so when we first turn it on it's going to smell a bit like burnt dust that'll clear pretty easily so don't panic if you get that happening i've just got some quality machine oil this one's actually a sewing machine oil and I just, I've already done it. I put a, a little drop on the end of the flat blade screwdriver and just 
fed it into where the bush is. You don't want too much because when it's too oily, it's going to attract more dust and it will stick to it and it's likely to then bind up the motor. So you don't need too much oil, but it spins beautifully and freely now. I've also done the other side, a little bit of drop on the end of the shaft there where the bush is. So we're pretty much right to reassemble it and give it a test. Okay, it's all back together now. Just make sure that you have all the wiring back where it used to be underneath any clamps. Uh, you don't want the blades to hit the wiring for obvious reasons. And you also don't want the wiring to be anywhere near the heating elements. So that's all good. The blade's back on and it spins magnificently. Super quiet. And there's um, a lot less friction there than what there used to be. So now we can just put it back together. Nothing else really needs attention here. Um, everything looks okay. I've blown a bit of dust out from around here. So I don't think we need to do anything much else. That's pretty much all that's involved in servicing a little fan heater. It's still quite dirty on the outside. I might have to start up my air compressor and give it a proper clean. The uh, compressed air cans really aren't the most economical or the most efficient way, but sometimes they're just very convenient. And plus, at the moment, my shed is so full of mess that I can't even get to my proper compressor. We'll get there eventually. Okay, so we can put these... Actually, probably what's a good idea now is just to replace these security screws with a normal one. Uh, just They're just a normal self-tapper. And then if we have to service the heater in the future, it's much easier to get into. And now time for a test. I've just plugged it in on the, uh, on the wall. And we'll start off on cool. Really good airflow now. I'm sure it wasn't pumping out that much air before. So now that's on high heat. And I can feel the heat coming through straight away. The thermostat, incidentally, is still on low. So that can certainly turn right up high if we need the room to get hotter. I just need to clean the fins a little bit more, but that's working beautifully. I can take that back inside, return it to our bathroom. It hasn't had to have been thrown out or replaced. It will be good for another many, many years. And now I've put normal self-tappers in there, it'll be much easier to uh, service next time when it gets a lot of dust and hair which is going to happen again. And I'll return that here to Christine and see if she wants it back. So thanks for watching, guys. It's still going beautifully, this heater. I'm standing in front of a fan-forced oven. It's going great. Uh, it's so easy to save this sort of... Hang on, I'll turn it off. It's so easy to save this sort of stuff from landfill. It's... People get lazy, and it's, it's easy, I guess, to put it in the bin and go and buy another one for the sake of $20 or $30. But this is so much plastic that's filling up our tips and our landfill sites. It's very easy to fix these, to service them. It will last for years and years and years with that sort of servicing. And you saw how easy it is to do. And it's great because we can save a lot of this stuff from going to the tip where it doesn't have to. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.